Hello everyone, it's nice to be here. Um, so we're presenting in our project Transforming Personal and Professional Digital Capacities in Teaching and Learning Context, a collaboration between social policy educators, students and learning technologists. So our first task, which you shorten the name, <laughs> which is now SPEEDS, which stands for Social Policy Education Enhancing Digital Skills. So we're just beginning to kind of launch our and um, our, our kind of project identity and to develop that and to develop our visual assets and logos, etc. But speeds from now on to be referred to. Um, so just very briefly to introduce, um, you can see the logos representing the seven participating institutions. So UCC is the lead institution and we also have um, uh, social policy educators and learning technologists representing um, IT Carlo, CIT, IT Tralee, uh, Waterford IT, Trinity College Dublin, and University College Dublin. Um, and I'd like to welcome Vera Cope here, who's representing CIT, and uh, Teresa Wilson-Feeler, who's here from TCD, sorry, <laughs> um, and Tom Amaro, who's the instructional designer in UCC. Um, other partners could be here, unfortunately, busy time of year with exam boards and planning days, etc. Um, hello to them, they are um, tuning into the live feed. Um, so just very briefly to outline the, 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 the genesis and the aim of the project. So we're kind of starting here. This, is, um, this figure is representing the social policy educator who is kind of keen to develop digital learning but very unsure of what direction, um, what direction to go in. So the aim of the project then is to bring together social policy educators and instructional designers and learning technologists within each of the participating institutions um, with a view to developing those social policy educators into digital champions and tracing their journeys um, along those um, pathways uh, so that others might learn from the process. Um, we are uh, developing that through, sorry this is significant, um, one of the, the, the objectives um, initially is to engage in an assessment of social policy agers' current uh, digital skills. Um, and as part of that, we're developing a, a new tool called the Spiky Profiling Tool, which Tom O'Mara is going to present about. And Tom is going to little, give a little update on where we are at with that. Uh, thank you, Eileen. Um, Yes, so I suppose the, the working title of what we're doing is we're developing a spiky profile tool and, and that concept was, I think, explained in our application process, it stems from uh, literacy. Um, so my own background before I joined UCC was I ran the distance learning service for the National Adult Literacy Agency in Ireland and the concept of a spiky profile uh, was developed by um, the National Research Development uh, Centre in the UK. Um, and the concept is that every single person has a different profile, right? So um, some people are very good at some things and, and very weak at other things. Um, so we thought we'd apply that, that model to what we do um, in higher education as well. So I run the instructional design team in UCC and part of what we do is so we do two things really. We support the development and the application technology to, to learning uh, by um, developing content with academics, but we also then do a lot of training um, with academics as well. So the, the picture up here in the top left, is, this is taken from our presentation back in November I think. Um, that's the write on to uh, spiky profile tool. If you go to write on that, if you want to see more of that, you can see that. Um, so this is what we said we would do. So the idea is that we would have every single individual that takes part in this project would have a, a personalized uh, literacy profile, digital literacy profile, and a development plan. So if you see here, for example, the, the different bar charts, or different bars explain where a person's skills might sit. This is obviously literacy at level two in the National Framework Qualifications. But you can imagine that'll be, that will now be um, something different, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but as well as having identified people's um, gaps and, 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 and strengths, what we also do is we um, point people towards where they can actually get um, support around those things. Um, we'll also have developed in the lifetime of the project information on what is an ideal uh, literacy profile of uh, someone working in the area of social policy. Um, so. What are we, how, are we doing, how are we doing that? We're using, I suppose, four different, I'm going to call them broadly frameworks, right? Because they're all slightly different. Um, we spent quite a bit of time over the last couple of months just looking at different contexts. So what are we going to reference here? So we could go and we could come up with our own curriculum and we could develop our own series of learning outcomes and, uh, and say these are the things we're going to, uh, to reference. But obviously um, we you know, have due regard to these four things. So the first one is 
uh, the professional development um, framework uh, by the um, National Forum for Enhancement Teaching and Learning, particularly Domain 4. So these, these are the areas that we're looking at. We also have then, of course, the um, All Aboard, and I know that um, the guys from All Aboard are here today as well. Um, so looking at all of these things, and we were very lucky we were involved in um, a U Online seminar with, the, with All Aboard uh, back in uh, April. So we actually got to talk to the guys a little bit more and find out about what's actually behind this lovely um, tube map of, of literacy uh, in higher education. We also then uh, referenced the, um, I suppose they've just developed a stations map as part of the All Aboard framework as well. So we're actually looking at the, the, the learning outcomes and the content that's up there. And we also reference, will be referencing the EU Digital Competences Framework 2.0. Um, particularly, I suppose, items one, uh, I think they're called dimensions, dimensions one, two, and three. Um, and we're also going to reference, sorry, it's not in there, actually, it's slightly missing, the uh, ECDL framework. So ECDL now have three different uh, particular awards around information literacy. Um, struggling to remember the other ones at the moment, but there's, there's three of them. Um, so, what we, so essentially what we've been doing for the last couple of months is taking all of the content from here, all of the learning outcomes, and grouping them together and seeing what, how would we actually, uh, do, how would we address each of these areas to see can we find some commonality. And we've been quite successful in the sense we've begun grouping them into themes. Um, we're now in the process of, once we have all the learning outcomes together, of probably the most difficult part of the project over the next two months is coming up with statements that people can um, answer yes or no to. So part of a um, spiky profile to listen, we don't ask people a whole series of questions. What we do is we, we make a series of statements and then they will agree or disagree with those statements. So it's yes, no. Um, so it's quite a bit of work in terms of designing that and sharing that with our colleagues and coming to a common understanding. And the last part of that process then, of course, is figuring out, well, if someone does say that they have a need, for example, around um, communication with students, where would they then go to get support around that? So we're looking to leverage as much as possible what's already out there. So we have reference to the um, tellu.me um, website, which was developed by CIT last year as a, as a national forum project. So there's a, there's a huge amount of content up there. We have the all aboard content. We have a lot of content in UCC. All of our partners have a, load of con have a lot of content as well. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to go back and actually start um, uh, redeveloping new content here. So we'll be using existing content and sharing it with our colleagues. The process and timeline, so slightly revised on what was in the uh, project plan. So we have already listed the reference points. That's those four different frameworks. We're grouping the learning outcomes together. So that's more or less complete at the moment. We're now, during July, going to be writing the statements that, cars, that come from those learning outcomes. Um, and I was the one who wrote all the, the outcomes for to write on, so I kind of have some experience in doing this. We're going to build a prototype. We're going to build a prototype using something like Google Forms or even just using Excel, just for people to use. There's a data protection issue here, of course, because we want everyone to take this content and actually own the data themselves in their own institution. So we want them to use that, um, roll it out with their, uh, as a pilot from September onwards with their own colleagues, and then give us feedback. And then the idea is next year, then we'll, we'll actually build the tool itself um, online. The tool is probably going to be something like you know, a DHTML or HTML5 form with a MySQL database underneath it and some sort of uh, exclusive admin rights then for each of the institutions to be able to access their own uh, profiles. Um, so that's, that's it in a nutshell, uh, if that's okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, so I suppose what we've really been focusing on in, or, or, or developing in the, the first phase of the project is just developing dialogue amongst the project partners. We're a, a, a quite a large group, so we have seven participating institutions, which means we have um, 14 participating members representing social policy education and the learning technologist instructional design. And then those people themselves represent a huge um, staff cohort as well. So within our School of Applied Social Studies, for example, there are about uh, 34 full-time academics involved who will all be engaged in the project at, at varying levels. Um, and the same we're seeing that replicated. So we're looking at quite a significant number of participants um, who are social policy educators and, and learning designers or learning technologists. So... Um, Part of that has been briefings, um, uh, we've been engaging briefings with our own um, academic colleagues within our individual institutions, um, within Applied Social Studies in University College Cork, because we're the lead institution, we've established an executive committee um, who are responsible for kind of monitoring and overseeing the rollout and the implementation of the project. And that's very important in terms of 
um, uh, communicating, I suppose, the aims and the ob objectives of the project and encouraging buy-in, because I think that's going to be the significant thing, is that we're trying to promote cultural change quite significantly. And um, I suppose it's no problem um, engaging with the digital enthusiasts. It's those who are a little bit more fearful and reluctant and resistant to involvement that are really going to be our target group. So the executive committee is important in terms of reaching out and the executive committee involves representation of social policy, social work, youth and community work. We have a postgraduate student representative who's also a tutor and from September we're recruiting undergraduate students to sit on the executive committee as well and then we've seen your staff level as well. So it's kind of to encourage, um, um, I'm, I'm using this term of change agents, that those involved in the executive committee will be representatives and ambassadors for the project within the school as well as adopting kind of monitoring role. Um, as you may observe, there's been a slight change in my life circumstances as well, which wasn't quite anticipated in November, but should have been known in November. But um, so we have, we I am recruiting a, po a project coordinator, which was written into the original budget, and I hope that um, that will be achieved in the next couple of weeks. So then I'll have like a two or three week handover to um, bring that person up to speed with. Um, not only the kind of the, the pedagogical aims, I suppose, of the project, but also the administrative systems, which is probably a lot more challenging um, in many respects. <laughs> so that's at one level we have within academic unit dialogue. At another level, then we have um, dialogue between the academic partners, the units, um, and the, um, the, the learning technologist or instructional design units. So what we've been doing, what I've been doing to date is um, disseminating a monthly newsletter. Um, at the moment, it's kind of been led more by me, um, and there's kind of action points within that. And that's been important just in developing, a, I suppose, consolidating the group, because we are a very new group. We have worked together in various combinations and permutations, but we've never actually come together as a whole group before. So that's been significant in trying to establish that kind of community of practice just within the, the, the project cohort and then expanding that community of practice ideally to the, 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 the larger social policy education and learning technologist group. And we also plan to use um, Basecamp to further interaction as well online. Um, and then we have interaction between academics and learning technologists and instructional designers um, within institutions. So that's a further level of dialogue. And I suppose we're trying to develop a common language to a degree as well. I am, I've rarely had the opportunity in the past to work with instructional designers. So there's a bit of a getting to know you there as well. Um, we have had our first um, meeting. Sorry, We had our first uh, project meeting in May. The first one was planned for, fe was it February? I think March and unfortunately it coincided with the first day of the transport strike so it had to be postponed very late but um, it was really good that we met in person um, in May and that was very productive in terms of establishing a sense of identity as a group as well. Um, this is um, a, um, a research article or a subtle article, a scholarship of teaching and learning article that I came across that provides a really useful framework for thinking about how we are each positioned in the project in terms of the aims and the objectives of promoting institutional cultural change. So again, I'm going back to that idea of being change agents. Um, and here, um, I suppose we're... we're um, members of the project are engaged at this micro level at individual faculty level so we're the ones who are the kind of the initiators the implementers the cultivators um, of change within the project and those concepts come from this article it's really a really interesting one for thinking about cultural change so i'd recommend reading it it's an open access resource as well which is always positive um, and then the idea is that at a micro level, we're beginning to feed into meso level processes. So it's important that we're beginning to interact with middle management within our own institutions 
um, but also with kind of meso level organisations outside of the institution as well, because the social policy is a very applied discipline. So we're thinking not only about the academic context, but also the how that is um, linked to community engagement with various professional organisations. So, for example, CORU are the accreditation body for social work, the same for social care, within which social policy is a significant subject. Um, we have accreditation bodies relevant to youth and community work. We have huge numbers of community-based organisations with, with whom we engage. So it's not only within the institution that this, it, this project will impact in terms of a cultural change, but hopefully it will reach far out into the community also. And then at the, the macro level, we're looking at changing institutional policy or impacting or informing institutional policy, again, both within our own institutions, but also within kind of representative institutions of you know, the Social Policy Association, for example, and even feeding into um, institutional strategies through the, through the National Forum at a broader level. So um, I, I really like this model, and that's something that we'll be, we'll be looking at. Um, in terms of research and dissemination, then, as I said, we've been looking at the kind of um, the, the project identity, sorry, and social media activity. So um, I've had, I have some prototypes of the um, logos, but um, we're kind of still working on those, but they'll be out soon. Um, in terms of disciplinary identity, that's something that came up as um, a key question at our partners meeting is, interestingly, social policy educators saying, well, what do you mean by social policy education? So we've taken quite a holistic approach in that. And we're looking at, I suppose, social policy is about well-being and people's welfare. But social policy isn't really taught as an undergraduate degree as such. It's more often taught as a subject within um, a social science degree, a nursing degree, occupational therapy, public health promotion, government, youth work, community development work. So social policy education happens within a huge range of teaching and learning contexts. And we're being quite holistic in terms of encouraging participation. So hopefully the, the reach and the impact and the dissemination of our work will impact on huge numbers of students, both undergraduate and postgraduate. In terms of planning, we've identified, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have an eye on Terry there in my peripheral vision. So we're planning um, the first digital day, and really that's an opportunity for social policy educators to come together and to think about the possibilities of, um, of enhancing their digital skills and what's possible to engage in um, within their teaching, within assessment practices. Um, so what we're doing is inviting digital champions from previous teaching and learning projects to showcase their work and to hopefully inspire participants to, um, to implement changes within their teaching practices over the following year, which we will trace in the, in the course of the project. Um, and we're going to um, put together a training calendar again from September 2017, and that's in parallel with the Spikey Profiles Assessment. So we're linking digital skills needs with training resources and making that available as an open access um, calendar that people can link into just kind of expanding the impact and reach again. And that's it. Thank you for the slightly borrowed time. Thank you.